Yard. Burdened with body parts, your fingernails packed with mud and chips of bone, you slink out of the graveyard. A kind of resurrection has taken place. And now you're back at the beginning here and can choose another course. And what I'd like to do is take you to the quilt. Um, you'll remember that I established this parallel between sewing and writing, and here it's taken in another direction. Kind of visual image made up, made out of the you know, sort of basic structure of the story space program itself, um, in which the text boxes become the patches in a patchwork quilt. And these sections, these the texts that make it up are themselves patchworked. They're all um, made up of quotes from other sources, some from Mary Shelley, some from the Patchwork Girl of Oz, well, some bits from the Story Space Manual, pieces of theoretical works, histories, ads. Plenty of time to make the girl, yet the task was not so easy as you may suppose. I found that I could not compose a female without devoting several months to profound study and laborious disquisition. I began to collect the materials necessary for my new creation magic lanterns, peep show boxes, waking dreams, geometrical demonstrations, philosophical doctrines, fortifications and impediments, cartographic surveys, and engineering machines of all sorts. At first I couldn't think what to make her of. I collected bones from charnel houses, paragraphs from Heart of Darkness, and disturbed with profane fingers the tremendous secrets of the human frame. But finally, in searching through a chest in a solitary chamber, or rather cell, at the top of the house, I came across a fabric of relations, an old patchwork quilt, which my grandmother once made when she was young. Around the quilt I became nervous, to a most painful degree. The fall of a leaf startled me, and I shunned my fellow creatures as if I had been guilty of a crime. Wasn't writing the realm of the truth? Isn't the truth clear, distinct, and one? But I said to myself that the quilt would do nicely for the girl, for when she was brought to life she would not be proud or haughty, as the glass cat is, for such a dreadful mixture of colors would discourage her from trying to be dignified. I believed as one should in the principle of identity, of non-contradiction, of unity, all the people I caught myself being instead of me, my unnameables, my monsters, my hybrids, I exhorted them to silence. But the stubborn matter of the fetus assumed the literal shape of concealed passions. If mothers imprudently yearned for pears or grapes, then identical fancies coursed through the tiny body. These poor babies became like the things their mothers too ardently desired blurry, several, simultaneous, impure. A hideous monster with calves head and hoofs, or that other dreadful person, the girl who is all patches, emerge from unsuitable sights and mixed fantasies. Through art one could even breed misfits and transform them into a new species. Mosaic techniques of the maternal imagination, mistress of errors, aren't you the very demon of multiplicity? While a single space can contain a large amount of text, most authors will want to split large spaces into more manageable parts. Just add an unusual character where you want each writing space to end and choose Explode from the menu. I cut up the quilt, creating a new copy of each paragraph in its own writing space. The exploded spaces are all created inside a new writing space, a very well-shaped girl which I stuffed with cotton wadding.